Welcome to the Minecraft Podcast, episode 124. This episode of the Minecraft Podcast is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, your customers get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash mindcrack. Thanks, everybody, for joining the podcast. Today we have Good. Hello. We have Co. Hey. We have Badge. Hello. Ooh, central. Um, central? Central. Central. Mm, that's that's very central, central right to now. He's central, central to, to his interests. Life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How's it going, everyone? Uh, this is all just the normal crew. We couldn't nail down a guest. So. <laughs> probably will, we say it like that. I don't blame him. So there. <laughs> so. Tried to get Jesus on, you know, but. You know, there, I, I knew a friend. Is that, is that humor too far? Yeah. Wow. Way too far. Way too far. Um, a friend of mine uh, from like a few years ago, his name was, uh, his username was always zombie Jesus. And he's actually kind of gotten like famous and like he's doing other stuff. He's like watching other YouTubers and stuff. Um, I recognize that name. Yeah. Twitter, he's, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And he's funny. He's and I met him, uh, at, uh, a, a dragon con and stuff like that. But I always realize, uh, I mean, Jesus really is the first zombie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no one's gonna touch that one. That joke. No one. No one's gonna agree. agree. Or <laughs> you said everything that can really be said. <laughs> it's the zombie king. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the first. He's the very first. I mean, you always see that like on Easter, right? Everyone always makes that joke. It's really. Oh, really? I thought that was like a. Yeah, it's original. Uh, yeah, it's no, no, extremely. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I anyway, so. George Romero came along and did a lot more for zombies than Jesus ever did. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Um, this is kind of be a laid back podcast because. Um, is it? Did you just decide that? Uh, you have you looked at the doc? I I did. I saw it. Chad, the I mean, CEO is here. I didn't can't say things that. like that. With all my stories, you know. You didn't want to surprise I, us all, like I didn't want to intimidate you because I got a lot to talk about. Well, well shit, man, go. <laughs> That's your oh. chance. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so are you nervous? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he put me on the spot like that. It's yeah. a lot of pressure. What you guys? Um, you guys like San Francisco? No. no. God, no. I oh, hate it. fuck. All right, then. <laughs> well, the, the weather is horrible. Thing. Yeah, um, like, the only things I know about San Francisco is like, it was way fucking colder than I had any idea. Nobody fucking told me. And then, two, apparently, hobos take giant shits on the sides of buildings right out on the open street. Yeah, like, hobos. You know, every convention I've gone to in the last little while, there's a lot of hobo shit around. Like, <laughs> and, that, and not, and not just right. stuff. That's not a euphemism for stuff. No, no, but there's a lot of turds on the sides of buildings. It's a I, really common thing. We were walking. I mean, we were walking places. Throwing them? I mean, what? No, no they just touching them. Do it on the ground. <laughs> like, I mean, like, this, is foreign, like this is foreign. This is so foreign to badge because. Without his pants, I take a shit. Yeah. And, That's and what I'm saying. San Francisco. Er, thing, man. London was so clean, like, so clean compared to any part, any, the cleanest part. Of San that's Francisco. They have toilets that rise out of the ground when people start getting drunk. Well, that's what we need in San Francisco. <laughs> have you not seen those code? They have these oh. fucking these, these cross sections are like this, but like But those are down. for peeing. Yeah, yeah, you can't. But I bet I'd rather you take a shit there than on the side of a building. I bet people have shit <laughs> shat in there before. I was blown away whenever Badge was dragging me through the streets the first time I was in London, literally dragging me because I was so drunk. And then like there's this guy just peeing, and like I've been used to pyro peeing on buildings, but this guy was peeing in a legal, <laughs> legal X from the ground. I was like, "Holy shit, this is urinal! Where was that during the day?" <laughs> Come on, video. Oh man, I think yeah, I uh, yeah, it's also pretty private because like it like it, it's it's right up say, on your I shoulders. Mean, they've had them in Paris uh, for centuries, yeah, peace wise. So. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Are you saying it's a bad idea, Good? 
I don't think it's a bad idea. It was just foreign, you know. It wasn't. You something just wish maybe used. they would have added like a little bit more private, like a curtain. Like yeah, like you know when you even Netflix windows got that little curtain, you know. You don't want everybody knowing what you're getting from Netflix or not. Not Netflix. Yeah, red box. Red red box. box. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I got a curtain in my house on my window. I call it my Netflix curtain <laughs> when I'm Netflixing and chilling. You know, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm watching Netflix. Stop watching me. God damn. Um, well, it's I think it's good. So wait, wait, no, let's continue to shit all over San Francisco. Oh God, oh, we, we don't have on. to. The hobos have already done that. For us. <laughs> Well, it's I like the fact because... that we both have that story, dude. Like, it's not just me. I didn't just see some random hobo. The fact that there's two of us that have the same story of a hobo taking his pants down and taking a giant dump on yeah. the street is like, that means it happens all the time. It's not a one-off now. It's right. a, totally right. normal for San Francisco. Well, it's Seattle, too. Like, that's what I'm saying. Both those places. Oh, I haven't seen you know, it feels like, okay, so I've been thinking a lot about, like, what what okay this is no, no, no. it seems like the city the city should should say if you have your private toilets open for public use you get a tax credit because we're gonna save so much money from there ain't, cleaning there up. Ain't no amount of money you could pay me as a business <laughs> yeah. to start dealing with people because it's not just this sounds yeah, terrible <laughs> it sounds terrible oh, I, to the I think check it up can't, yeah 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 <sighs> The thing is, I, I worked at a, I worked at a place where this was a thing that came up, and the the problem is is that you're so frozen. Some right now. me, yeah, it yeah, keep freezing. You know, it's just a thing. It's a coast <laughs> keep happening. Man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> was I at least in a cool position? Am I like? Hey, well, it's like it's like you have like bad. your frame rate's gotten really low. Yeah, you got like about it's fine minutes. on my side. Like my camera's <laughs> not frozen on my end. I'm sure it's my internet, but <laughs> and, nevertheless. Your uh, audio sounds great, so it doesn't matter. Good. All right. So I just put a still image up all the time. Uh, <laughs> the The problem is, is that some, not all homeless people, but some homeless people will come in and they will just fuck up your bathroom. Mm. And like they'll smear shit all over the place and, and do all kinds of terrible stuff. And it's so, I mean, no no tax credit is going to make yeah. places do that. Not to mention the fact that a lot of places are going to look at like, well, people aren't going to want homeless people hanging around yeah and it's like kind of awful because they're people so but the, it's the thing is is that like a lot back. of be out more than anything that's one of the reasons i hate going to conventions because there's like no way to fix it and i always feel like i want to help these people and i don't know how and it's so yeah it's such I, a I think stressful that, thing that really you should just like you gotta like desensitize yourself and just not give a shit. I just haven't worked out how to do that because I'm only there in short periods of time. Well, uh, you, no, you, I the mean, thing is you I have think... to recognize that the, these sorts of things can only be fixed gradually. Like most most people, if they get a windfall, even people that aren't down on their luck, what happens so often, right, is that it doesn't help. In fact, it may make things worse because then they think, oh, I have all this money, I'm gonna blow it all, and then you know they, well, you they also. A lot of homeless people have mental issues, mental health issues. Like I, I know for a fact that uh, there is a. Um, uh, what the hell! I just got a Postmates thing that says your thing is arriving now. No, I hope not, because I didn't order <laughs> anything. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so like, uh, there's a family member who has schizophrenia, who it, she's very. It's very hard to help her because only she. Like you can't force medicine or you can't force treatment on someone. It's just against the law for, for you know, a family member to, to force that sort of treatment. So if she d doesn't take the treatment she needs, she goes crazy and she, she can't hold down a apartment, a hotel, a can't keep track of money. And she becomes homeless, like whenever she has an episode. And that's a lot. I, I, all the homeless people I see in L.A., Almost all of them, all the ones that are perpetually homeless have mental health, a lot have mental health issues. Right. There are some people who it's kind of like a lifestyle choice. There's some people who can't, you know, manage money or have, you know, another, and, and also addiction is also mental health. You know, I wish that there was easier options for mental health in our country. 
And, and, Later. and not just like this, I almost feel like there's like a difference between like soft mental health issues and hard mental health issues where you are non-functioning <clears throat> mentally and, and like with, you know, my, my um, family member who has schizophrenia, when, when she just has an episode, she is non-functioning. She's violent. She, you know, is paranoid. She cannot stay anywhere. She becomes homeless. Yeah. The, these are problems, I think, that can only be fixed gradually over a long period of time. And there has to be stuff in motion to make that happen. I mean, here in Phoenix, we have that are, like they're charity funded um, nonprofit sort of places. It's like right where all the homeless people are. I, I think that place is really good. It's just boom, right where they all are in the city. So they can all just go there and get things like health care or dental care or schooling or all kinds of stuff. You have to have some place for them to go and they have to be able to get there easily to, you know, get the benefits. Cause it's not like they can just round them up and fence them in somewhere like problem solved. Yeah. We did it. No more homeless people. You don't have to look at them anymore. There you go. Yeah. Like they need to help people. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like, like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, my family member gets so distraught that she can't even go get welfare for herself. It's like, mm -hmm. we give welfare to people who are underprivileged. I feel like that would be way, uh, you know, a portion of that would be so well used towards people with mental health problems that are non-functioning in society and, and try to, to make their lives better. You know, it's, it, yeah. I don't know. It's a, such a difficult problem. Such a difficult problem. It's, it's a matter of money because there's definitely exactly. people that want to help. There's definitely people that want to help those people. And there's definitely people that can provide the right kind of help that like, you know, they're experts with mental issues or people who are schizophrenic and know how to, you know, provide some sort of safe existence for them. But the money has to be there and the right circumstances have to be there and people have to give a shit. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. If I ever wanted, if I ever started a charity, I think that's the thing I would actually want to focus on more than anything is homelessness, just because mm -hmm. it feels like I don't know. I, I think it's a pretty solvable problem if people just do. You need, yeah, you, you need know? to have an open mind about a lot of the the individual situations, uh, and I, I, th I, th I personally, and I don't know if this is true. I haven't looked at any stats, um, but I personally think that mental health is uh, is a big factor. Um, well, we're we're terrible about mental health in the United States. Oh we're, my gosh, the people, people are terrible like health. Period in the United States. Well, really. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there's definitely not a socialist overall sort of mentality in yeah. the states. But even that aside, like, the thing is, is that wise, we don't really deal with mental pro health problems yeah. at all. Like, yeah. we even we, mainstream uh, yeah. kind of ignore. Yeah, they're like archetypes more than actually acknowledged problems. You know, like yeah. like oh, it's psycho or it's a uh, you know somebody schizophrenic. You're more likely to see people making fun of somebody like yeah. that, or than actually or, talking you know, that, about it in a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, like like more more mundane, I guess, mental issues are where it starts to show because there's a lot of people who have problems that are not as blatant as as schizophrenia. Right? right, like depression or the shades of gray. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, things that are more like you, they're mental issues that you can live with, mm -hmm. and but people's attitude about them is, oh, well, just chin up, right? Just right. chin up, or whatever. Yeah, don't, it's, don't, kinda, don't it's kind of it's kind of like how you just choose not to be depressed, right? <laughs> like, ADD or ADHD used to be like when I was growing up. It was sit down, like stop. Just sit down right. and pay attention. Right. You know, it's like that and doesn't. Then, and then work. when people start to do something about it, people get mad about it, right? Right. They make fun of it, like ah, we keep giving kids drugs and yeah. blah blah blah. And it's not it's always like, no. An you're agenda. just ignorant about the issues, right? Well, it's it's always like like Badge was saying. It's like lots of gray areas because I mean, yeah. maybe it's true that we give too many pills and drugs to kids, like like we're just over diagnosing them. But on the other hand there's probably some legitimate problems and we're just not, we haven't reached a middle ground. Like well, this. It's the whole thing of, of when I was at school, ADHD was called naughty. Kind yeah, of thing. exactly. Right. Yeah. 
It was, yeah, it was hyperactive. And, and there's yeah. probably some that are legitimately ADHD, and there are probably some that are being over, you know. Yeah, uh, and there's probably some that their parents just haven't taught them no, you know, or, yeah. or right. raised. Yeah, exactly. And then Co died. So yeah. that okay. happened. Poor Literally. Co. Poor Co died. So back to uh, where we started. Have you ever been to San Francisco Patch? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have not been uh, to San Francisco. Um, ironically, that is where uh, my ex came from and uh, wanted to go there at some point. So, ironically. Oh. Well, good news, Bad, because <laughs> my crack is going to San Francisco November 7th. What? I what? had no idea. Wow. It's news to all of us. We could well, all- I, I kind of figured that um, if I actually ever went to San Francisco, the long overdue earthquake would happen. So I'm right. Well, we'll all be there for it together. We can hold each other and while we raise money for extra life charity. So the, the announcement is that uh, November the 7th, we're going to be doing our Minecraft marathon in San Francisco at the Microsoft loft. Microsoft has been nice to us to give us this whole big loft area with all these computers and um, just everything you could ever need to do this marathon from. Um, Woo! So we, everyone knew that there was going to be a marathon, but now we're announcing that A, it's going to be in San Francisco, and B, we're all going to be there in person. Yeah, most of us. I don't know. Most I don't. I don't know the complete list because it's changed a little bit. Because uh, originally, so here's the whole long story. We uh, we originally were going to do it in New York City at the Microsoft Loft, uh, but timing and constraints messed that up a little bit because we wanted to do it October 19th, the Minecraft uh, anniversary, but just couldn't get everything together in time for it to happen. Um, so we're moving it to the game day, the Extra Life game day, November 7th. And uh, I think there's 18 of us that are going to be there. There was originally 16 that are going to make it in New York, but two more have said that they can make it now that the dates have changed. Um, and Delta, you guys know how much I love Delta. Uh, coincidentally, they're going to be the ones that provide all our flights. Um so they're helping out, and also Marriott is providing us with rooms. So we've got uh, some great people helping us out to get us all there to make it happen. And the the list of things, you know how we always give away stuff for, like, top donors and stuff. Uh, I thought last year we had a just amazing list of things um, to give away, and this year the list is, like, twice as big uh, from different companies like Jinx, um, I don't. I don't want to name everything because there's just so many things. Uh, Superfy, Telltale. Uh, well, some things are not yet confirmed, are they? Right. So, yeah. 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 There's a couple really cool things that if they are confirmed, once they're confirmed, I'm really excited about. I'm really but jealous. I'm, really, I'm so excited. I'm like, jealous for giving them away. I'm like, why would I keep that? What? <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of things that I'm, I I think are getting made that's like, and they're not even gonna be available for sale. Yeah. They're only for this, and we're not even getting one. And, well, not we, only we, that, but in the past. <laughs> We've done 24 hours. This time yeah. it is 48 hours. We're going to try to go for a and full. And we're all together. And we're all together. So yeah. in, this is just so cool. In San Francisco, as many Minecrackers as we can get in one space, tons of stuff to give away, uh, ton, uh, like uh, 48 hours, and we're going to hope to raise more money than we ever have before for Extra Life. I'm so the uh, CEO of Extra Life himself will actually be there, Jeremy. He's going to uh, – because there's two different big events that are happening, and so they're splitting up all the Extra Life executives, and they're going to each of them because Rooster Teeth's going to do a thing on that day as well. Um, so I'll p- plug the enemy, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the, well, it's all going to the same cause. Nobody so. donate to them, okay? No. <laughs> Give it to us. Yes. No. <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, and then um, – shoot. I thought there was one more thing I was going to say, but uh, I don't think there is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to go back to San Francisco. I quite enjoyed it. It was a little bit cold. I'll bring it I think, I think um, a few of us Euro guys, uh, we, we're still kind of not not totally 100% committed yet, have we? Because um, I think that, uh, well, I know originally, like when it was in New York, Doc wanted to come like a week early. And yeah, we had a few days I'm off of work and then this has been so this is by the way we've been trying to figure this out for months because before it was in New York it was in LA oh so yeah it's a yeah. lot of people involved and then it was at us it was at a we we're gonna try to rent a space 
and that was that was too expensive. We didn't want to take that much money away from the charities. And then we tried to work with YouTube, and that didn't work out. And then we tried to work with Twitch, and that didn't work out. <laughs> and then Microsoft said that they'd like to help, and we're like, "This is great." And it we tried to. They had you know we've done it multiple. You know they we finally worked out with Microsoft, but um, we've been working really hard on this uh, so far. Yeah. But the, 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 my point was, it's, it's a long way to go for 48 hours and then fly back again. So we're kind of trying to work out if we can get somewhere to stay extra and, you know, to plan that stuff. So that's why we haven't confirmed confirmed as yet. But we probably are. Yeah. Who, who well, someone's going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll no, no. You, oh, you mean, yo, you mean the people? Who Euro, are... Euro peeps. Yeah. 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 Yeah, very. It's uh, it's gonna be really neat, and also um, the the it's it's hard to describe everything without like showing it to you. But the loft space will be so cool for playing. I have games. a video on my phone. I don't know a good way. Like, uh, so my plan was to announce this in its own video, and also our five year shirt, um, all in one video. I was gonna do that this last weekend, but it was really hard to get that shirt campaign. Be a finally a thing, uh, and hey, well, uh, one thing we can announce is we'll be bringing back the live UHC. So yeah, I think we want to do. Well, I don't know if this is going to happen, but we we really discussed doing more than one UHC. Uh, I can shut up. Oh. <laughs> but also, shut hopefully, up. we'll have elements of that are physical because everyone's going to be there. Right. Instead that's of just donating be- for a golden apple, that pause will feed to a horse. You can also oh there's oh cool there's you that's me that's me saying this will this will be right here this is where people will say oh wow that's really cool um, but we'll hopefully do something crotch. really neat like <laughs> there's Severus Crotch again yeah I really like Severus Crotch but yeah all of those little there areas is, uh, a tweet from you saying no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay it's very it's a very cool uh, space there's two living room areas. Um, seven is walking right in front of the shot. Jeez, right, guys, got no camera sense. Man. I know. Gah. <laughs> um, it'll it'll be it'll be perfect for this event. And big thanks yeah. to Microsoft for for yeah uh, making the, that happen. That table's a giant like redwood tree. It's amazing. They cut down an entire tree just for that table. Yep. Um, deforestation. Awesome. But yeah, you can but see all the computers. Like, there's plenty of room for a UHC. It's it's very low. Yeah, yeah. We hope so to have cool. like physical stuff, so not just uh, virtual, but like maybe if you donate enough, they get pied in the face, or maybe they have to stand up to play UHC, or maybe we have to tickle them blindfolded for a few blindfolded seconds. for yeah or whatever or you know you give them a wet willy. I don't know. We're still trying to figure out stuff, but. Um, I was thinking like, like, uh, like you have like an ice bath type of thing. You have to put your feet in like ice ice oh. water. Like just we I'm could get, to think of things that aren't super messy. No, we uh we get to like you can. I think there's like a cold gun that'll like it'll, like psh, like out cold, and you put that on their fingers. So like as they're gaming, like their fingers are all super cold. <laughs> you can tweet us suggestions either at uh, the Minecraft account or or personally. We have a Nerf gun war. Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, I kept yeah. dreaming about Dance Dance Revolution last night. And so I decided that, that, my, that my dream was like, we need to have Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> I don't know why I was dreaming about it. I was also dreaming about the yeah, other I'm really good at that. Tangenting now, but uh, I was taking over the world by cloning myself over and over again. And then we were in like a clone war, like uh, whoever could clone themselves the most would end up winning the whole thing. That's funny. I was Asian, too, for some weird reason. I don't know why I was Asian. <laughs> At least you're open-minded about it, you know. You're, you're basically transracial. Uh, that's I funny. I was an Asian clone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were a pyro. Uh, but there's going to be another Teespring campaign after this one for Act the Extra Life, where all the money goes directly to uh, Extra Life Charity as well. Mm-hmm. But we'll announce that uh, in November. <laughs> Soon it comes together a little bit quicker than this one did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the marathon. I, I can't wait for all of us. I think that's the most of us will ever be in one spot together, too. Like the, the I hope prior, so. I think the most was like a mind count where like 12 of us or something. Yeah. And especially something where we're all focused on doing stuff together. Like Minecon is so like, oh, yeah, we're all here, but 
you know, we're all going to do yeah. stuff. Um, right. I mean, the goal is to get basically everyone to fly out, but obviously there's some people who, A, haven't shown their face. There are some people who have already have um, some conflicts. But I think we're going to get, we hope, to get the majority of people's of people out there. Yeah. People's people. Yeah. People's people. Since it's being done by Microsoft, uh, there's a couple things that people are going to want. They're not going to get and that it mainly goes to uh, consoles outside of Microsoft. Um, I've seen people talk about uh, you know, Mario Kart and those things and we'll have to skip those. Uh, we could do Gmod Kart. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could do anything on, on a windows system. Um, or an but, Xbox uh, system, yeah. Or an Xbox, right. But we won't be playing uh, right. anything. And no complaining be... about it either, because seriously, right. the freaking space and what they're allowing us to do, they had to, this is not a normal thing for... Nice. No, <laughs> and the amount of money Microsoft is putting out to make it... So just because they have the loft doesn't mean they can just use it anytime, and apparently it's going to cost them tens of thousands of dollars to have it open for four days for us. So, uh, so once again, no parts. complaining about what consoles we do, because seriously, they're way generous in order to allow, yeah. allow let, let's put it this way for us to rent it out when we were, we originally started I, to rent out a space in LA because I thought LA would be nice. We'd have like, if we ever wanted extra camera equipment, we could just go out and buy it. I'm here. So I could set stuff up <laughs> ahead of time. The nice. cost <laughs> was $70,000. To rent the space. Now, you know, there's, I'm not saying that that's exactly how much, you know, Microsoft is putting in, but because I don't, uh, you know, but you can make some parallels that it's expensive to rent out a space that can hold, you know, 20 ish people, probably less. I don't know. I don't know how many people we're going to have. Um, but it's a, it's with the Microsoft crew, it'll be over 20 people in there for sure. Yeah. And we got Drew, our camera guy, he'll yeah. be there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, the it's guys. Yeah, there's a lot anyway, of people there. Very generous of them to do that. And I know it's not costing Marriott anything because it's their own hotel, but I mean, it's still got a cost. There's still like a cost of act. I mean, there's a cost, even though yeah. it's not the same. But like, if we were to buy those hotel rooms ourselves, they're like 400 bucks tonight. Yeah. So, well, same with the, the the flights. Like each of those. Oh, yeah. I I don't know even what to call them. Corporate partnerships for the charity. Like each yeah. of those, and, and that is like a direct. I, you know, that, that is directly helping out the event, which will help us raise money for charity. Yeah. So it's very, 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 very cool. Corsair, Corsair is providing computers. Mm -hmm. We'll have, you know, and then all of this, I, I almost feel like we shouldn't mention yeah. too many companies because it's all going to change uh, right, up until right. November. Um, but yeah, there, and, and we'll make sure to shout them out. All the all the yeah. generous companies on the live stream. Yeah, a month from sure. today. Is it really? Is it day the seventh? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Fuck. Wow. We have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. I know, man. And that's the thing too. I don't feel like we've stopped in months already. Like I'm so exhausted. I want this year to be over. Like this year's been yeah. hard, a hard year. Yeah. We've been planning this since July. Yeah. Since June. That was E3, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E3 yeah, is right. when we yeah. sat down and and discussed this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so we're doing stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We love people and you guys and kids and... Saving them. Saving lives. Uh -huh. Yeah. Doing, doing what we can do to, to make that happen. So. I feel like I'm not communicating well today. I'm like, my nose is all stopped up and I'm just not feeling well. And it's just like, I feel like I'm not being as excited as I could be about things. I don't know. No. Anyways. Well, uh, I hope that you guys are excited. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, just keep it locked to either Twitter accounts for updates or, or Reddit or uh, maybe even our website um, where we'll, uh, we'll have some updates on, on things to enjoy and uh also the giveaways what will be given away and i don't know just uh it all moved pretty fast it's only happening in a month and uh, and did we even say it's it's in on the seventh which is the extra life weekend right the game day yeah no, game I, day. I mean i think we mentioned it but yeah uh that's that's why a lot of other groups will be doing their stuff um 
that weekend as well. That's that's the last year's remember that's where we all went down to Florida, but they've moved the uh the Florida children's weekend to February. So we'll be doing that in Got February, it. some at least. Got it. Um I think so, you're going to that too, maybe, possibly. I don't know. They want us. They want us Let's all try. to go to that too. So they want us all to go to San Francisco and all of us to go to Florida. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, um, and so, just to confirm, it'll be on the seventh. It'll run through until the ninth. Right. So it'll start on the seventh and end on the ninth. Florida in February is probably actually bearable temperature as well. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Florida's nice just all the time, just every day, except whenever the hurricanes aren't hitting. There's like not a cold period of time in Florida. It rains yeah. every day. Oh yeah, it does rain every day. I don't day. understand what I mean, it's called I'm, the I'm sunshine state. I'm talking about temperature. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, rain, you're wrong. No, 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 no. It gets so uh, hot and humid. It's just. Dis- yeah. No, I'm talking about it doesn't get cold. Okay. Okay. It doesn't get cold. That's sure. all. That's all. The other problem is freaking. It's a swamp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, seriously, if you don't have your pool, like, screened in, you're just going to get sucked dry from mosquitoes. Giggity. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I was I was imagining you were going to say something about crocodiles, and when you said sucked dry, I was like, where is this going? Because I thought it was going to be about crocodiles, like, going in, because you said screened in. I thought you were, oh. like, fit in. And yeah. like, well, that's why I said screened like, in. No. You know, crocodiles and raccoons, and then like, yeah. I don't know, you're gonna be sucked dry by crocodiles. <laughs> yeah, it's like, right. No. Right. I like Florida. I lived there for, I, I didn't really live there. It's hard. I was there for like three months. What do you call that? An extended stay? Because like it was yeah. definitely long enough to like get to know like all the roads and. Have friends and yeah, because I, I stay in Boston for like three months, and you acclimatize to, right. to the local way, right. don't you? But it's not enough to actually right. But you can't say that you lived there yeah. unless it's like basically past a year. Really, you have to stay a year. I don't know, right? Like, but I, that's why I, I don't know. Were you renting or were you staying with someone? We were renting. Mm, that's kind of like you lived there. Yeah, like I had my because car could- there. I yeah. I like I had a job that I had to drive to. Oh, then you definitely lived there. You totally lived there. Okay, <laughs> then I lived I lived in Florida. I lived in Orlando then for three months. Um, Why didn't you keep staying there? Uh, well, it was a gig. See, that's the other oh. thing. Is it was a it was a, it was Halloween Horror Nights for Universal Studios. Mm. So I was there for their Halloween season. Um, uh, What'd you bef- do? I was a stage manager uh, for Brian Brushwood's show. And um, oh, you did a show during the Halloween horror thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we came in early to do practicing and like set in prop building and whatnot. And then the Halloween Horror Nights runs for like a month and a half or something like that. Um, and then we stayed a little bit after to you know tear down. But that was fun because also, I you know I worked with all the people you know backstage at Universal, and they had worked in all of the. Uh, uh, what is it? Theme parks all around in Orlando. So, like, if we wanted to get into Disneyland, like, they knew they're like, here's what you do: you go over to this hotel, and they have an ESPN bar, Disney World, uh, and they have a they have the ESPN bar, and so you just tell the guy that you want to go to the ESPN bar, and that way you get free parking because that's just all free. And then the ESPN bar is on the boardwalk, so you take the boardwalk bridge over into Epcot, and then you get free parking to Disney World. <laughs> and it was like. Okay. And then they're like, here's what you want to do once you're in Disney World. Okay, do this, do this, go get fish and chips. And then for dinner, you take those fish and chips and watch the Beatles play. And then right after that, it'll be the fireworks show. And it's just like all the locals knew like everything. And it was like a fantastic experience all the time. Like, you know what? The ice cream in France is actually better than the ice cream in the U.S. because they use different milk, like like stupid stuff like that. I, th- I think I got slightly freaked out by walking into a subway and there are at least six people with holsters with guns you know, on their shoulders. Oh, yeah. On their hips. Uh, well, you know what? You don't, you don't need to take your gun into a sandwich shop. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, they take it everywhere. The yeah. thing is, like, Florida can get podunk so <laughs> fast. Like, you think, oh, I'm in a city. Oh, this is so nice. Drive down a road. 
Holy mackerel! There's like oh yeah yeah we we drove from our hotel to uh to the convention center where Minecon was and yeah. we ended up down some right right CD. It was a main road, but then there was like gun shop, gun shop, strippers, gun shop. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. Crocodile skin like just drying out on the road like yeah creepy. The, creepy the Wednesday stuff. afternoon strip joint with cars in there, you know that's going to be a good yeah one. yeah <laughs> going to get sucked dry. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. Okay, anything else that we need to talk about that? Badge, you have a story in here, the only story. I know. What was I thinking? I don't I know. Have... No, my story was the marathon. You didn't put it in the dock. Yes. Technically, okay. he's correct. Anyway, <laughs> Goo doesn't it's care. Like... Goo's just like, I feel sick. <laughs> as usual mine is really dull and boring um, but quite important the um, safe harbor rules that uh, protected European data when sent to US servers have been ruled to be uh, unlawful uh, so basically in 2000 uh, an agreement was made where uh, the European people's personal data that was kept by companies such as Google and Facebook and stuff. If it was sent over to the US, it was classified as European data and had to be um, held by European rules, not American laws. Okay. Um, and apparently the NSA and the American government had just been running all over that and ignoring it completely. So um, it's going it, – it's going to have shockwaves of a very large thing. Um, they, they did say uh, he equated it to something else in this document. If you remember what it. Um, I missed the start of your explanation because I was just following the Aurelian. What the hell? Uh, European personal data, um, such as Facebook stuff, um, Google information, all that sort of stuff. If it was per, if it was transferred over the Atlantic to a US server. Um, it had to be kept separate and was classified as European data. And, oh, there's and, no way they were doing that, were they? Yeah, it had to be treated with European laws as far as security and uh-huh. you know, um, looking at it. Was Does everyone have to do that? Uh, if, you, if you're if you taking yeah, European stuff over to the US service, yeah. Fuck, um, we don't do that. But no, because no. your, your rules are different. Because you're American data in American service, you're you're bound. So if by it was American a European law. company, that's the only way you'd have to do that. So like, okay, you're signed up for Facebook on Facebook.com, a U.S. based company. Facebook.com has to store your data in the database separately from U.S. customers. Correct. Yeah. Well, as far as I'm aware, as I'm not an expert on this, but as far as I'm aware, at least six people in the, in the comments will be. But um, as far as I understand, yes, it has to be kept it treated as separate data under U, U, EU laws, not American laws, even if it's an EU so a uh, US server. See, I've never even heard about this. I've programmed tons of databases that collect customer information from all over the world, and I've never thought about treating that data any differently based on where the customer or, or originated from. I think it depends on what you do with it more than what storing it. I think it's if you if you store it and you don't give it to anybody, I don't think that really matters. Uh-huh. So it's just rules as, of weight. As I understand it. it. Well I should I should clarify this everything with as I understand it. I am not an expert. Uh, but if you if you bring it over and then you start selling it to you know other companies for data mining or anything like that, then yeah, it starts getting a bit tricky. That's crazy. Um, it's just, um, it's like you almost uh, like you just want an internet government. Like, listen, all all things on the internet are like this, except I don't. Well, that's kind except of I been don't. included in the uh, Trans Pacific Partnership, mm. which is just another. Let's not even try to talk about that in the podcast because none of us are experts. <laughs> no, fuck it all. No, no, no. <laughs> well, the problem with that is they don't tell us what's in it. Well, they kind of have now that they've finally agreed on it. Yeah, but it's hundreds and hundreds of pages. That's that. They didn't tell me. I didn't get an email. Nobody sent an email to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've mm. been trying to read and understand, but it's, it's yeah, it, it's all big. 
Uh, but yes, it, it's all it's all coming under the human rights laws, basically, um, and we've got significantly more human rights laws than you have in the US. Um, and it's, it's again, this is all down to Edward Snowden and all his leakings. Hmm. That man's so cocky. I said the other night on the um, on the well, Shaft the podcast, the, life, to be honest. the final Shaft podcast. Um, yeah, that's an announcement. The Shaft is dead. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but they they are actually. Dead. <laughs> but um, no, but yes. <laughs> uh, we did our pop show that right, but that was something I talked about during it. Was that is it just me or is Ed, Edward Soda just a little bit enjoying the spot limelight a little bit too much at this point? Like I I I I, I don't want it's gonna it's a controversial opinion, uh, um, I'm sure, but. I whenever I saw he made a Twitter account, I saw he was following one person, and I thought if I was going to be cocky, the only person I would follow would be the NSA. And I was like, I clicked on his followers, and the only person he follows is the NSA. And I was like, hmm. yeah, that's a cocky move. I don't know. Hmm. I just think he's got a little bit cocky. I mean, I, 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 what he's fine, but I think I'm surprised he hasn't had an accident. Right, right. He's must be very careful to not die. Yeah, uh, and. and, and yeah, I'm surprised. So he's probably knows that is going to happen at some point, and it's just right. the thing is, is that you do like possible. you have to think of what is about ready to happen when you become like prime target number one to the U.S. government, and being like you have to, you almost have to have a little bit of narcissism the way that he did it. Why wouldn't he just link it a- anonymously? Right. <laughs> To be honest, I'm slightly surprised now that he hasn't gone back to the US and been arrested. And, and he do, uh, offered, actually, he offered, he contacted the US and said, what kind of agreement can we have here? If I turn myself in, I'm willing to do jail time, whatever. And they didn't respond. Hmm. So, uh, Nelson Mandela and also almost become a sort of martyr kind of thing for the cause. Right. I think that's the problem is that the US can't, they can't win here. If you poll the United States, most people don't want anything. He, they don't want him prosecuted, right? I mean, right. So once you prosecute him, yeah, he's going to become a martyr for sure. Um, so honestly, it's easier for the U.S. just to leave it as it is. Let him live in Russia or Hong Kong or wherever he is right now. I'm not actually sure where he's at. That would Moscow, suck. Like you Moscow. are always constantly looking over your shoulder. Like, are, is the government going to assassinate me today? Is the government going to assassinate me today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta think he doesn't have the same, like you know, he didn't have a secret service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And like, I, uh, like sure no Russia's government is gonna help him out. I, I mean, like Russia's sort of helping him out just because he's in there, but right, like they haven't deported him. But yeah, I don't know. I like, I don't think Russia's given him like citizenship. Or right, exactly, like that. exactly. And, and it's funny because for, for for the Americans, you know, Russia's probably the last place they want him. Well, yeah, that's probably why Russia wants to have, let him be there. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I don't think Russia and I were ever allies, even though we pretended like we were for a little bit there. Like, I don't yeah. think. Well, you still have your Russia. paranoia about communism. So, yeah. mm. uh, commie is still a dirty word over there, isn't yeah. it? Still, yeah. 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 Uh, with that, let's thank our sponsor for this episode. Because <laughs> uh, we are we are not communist. Uh, we are we are um, uh, capitalist, and, uh, and, and Braintree do not support sanctioned. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to speak on behalf of Braintree, <laughs> but. This episode of the Minecraft podcast is brought to you by Braintree, uh, code for easy online payments. If you're building a mobile app and searching for the right payment solution, please check out Braintree. Braintree's V.0 SDK makes it really easy to offer a ton of different payment types. You could start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, credit cards, and more, all with just the Braintree integration. Uh, so please check it out. You can learn more and get your first $50,000 in transactions fee free. You don't have to pay any fees on your first $50,000. Uh, if you go to braintreepayments.com slash mindcrack. And, uh, we thank Braintree so much for their support of the mindcrack podcast. Thanks so much, Braintree. Thanks, Braintree. Thanks, Braintree. Uh, 
First question is from Strax. And uh, he says, I have a shortest question this time. Cream sickles, fudge sickles, or pop sickles? Which one do you prefer when you were a kid, and which ones do you prefer now? Thanks for answering my questions. Hello, Lord Bads, Flips, Kate Back, and Bows. Well, I, don't, I know what a popsicle is. You don't know what a fudge sickle is? Um, anecdotally, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look it up. Um, Google it. I mean, this is um, basically like frozen chocolate water, right? Fudge sickle? Yeah, it's but it's like creamier than that. It's a creamsicle like ice cream on a stick, basically. No. no creamsicle is that orange thing. It has orange, orange? an orange outside, uh, like popsicle, and then the inside creamy, like ice cream. All right, okay, yeah. So, yeah, no, uh, yeah. Orange. Yeah. What do you call them? Fudgicle is just like chocolate choc- ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. But it's not quite ice creamy. It's more. It's it does have a different consistency than ice cream. A bit chewier. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As a kid, I, fudge sickles ice. were like what we always had. We always had those. So as a kid, as an adult, I really, I don't really eat them. But proper, I have popsicles in my freezer right now. Do you? Yeah. Huh. I ate popsicles I on stream once. It's too much of a time commitment. I just realized that's that's what it is. It's too it takes too long. I really eat a little bit of ice cream, you know, a couple spoonfuls. I'm done. I can control my spoonful amount. A popsicle. You're like you're you're going in thinking the next thirty minutes. I gotta hold this stick for sure. I'll be holding this fucking stick here, and if I don't eat it at the right rate, it's gonna drip down on my fingers. You gotta have a napkin or something wrapped around the stick. Problem, but I I find it with ice cream, I tend to eat it all. Um, so I. I you just get like the whole tub out. You're just like, well, I don't need a bowl, motherfucker. Yeah, I, yeah, I am like you need you need the portion control of a popsicle. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. I do. but I, I like I like lemonade popsicles. Um, <laughs> well, what do you call them? What do you call them? Ice lollies. Ice lollies. Yeah, that's just wrong. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> um, that, and, that, that sounds like it should be like a lollipop. That's that's the portion control that I need in my popsicle. Just a little ball on the end of a fabs, stick. Fabs nice nice. But they're they're probably creamsicles, really fabs, because they're like um, they're like rocket lollies. Rocket, lo- rocket <laughs> like, hey, so they're like rocket lollies. They kind of like tapered like fifties rocket shapes, but they like do three different colors. They usually like strawberry. Oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you guys only have <laughs> one ta- type of ice. I thought lollies. that was a very American thing because they're always red, white, and blue. Mm, yeah, or or, or yellow, like orange, and red. But they're they're more they're more creamsicle shaped, and they've got <laughs> like a chocolate layer on the top with like hundreds and thousands. Them. You know what I always hate about popsicles? I'm the double stickles. Um, because then you want to split with someone, and you can never break them right. They don't ever break right. Right. The double stick. You get like a knife or something. When the knife comes in with your popsicle eating, it's you've gone. Yeah, this is yeah, something. this is too complicated. I mean, we always had the uh, those push pop popsicles. The icy, the like fro- or wait, which way? The the orange push pops, like the Flintstone. No, ones? no, 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 no. The the the. Plastic that would cut the sides of your lips. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We yeah, always had those like that, that are normally just juice until you put them in there, and then they're all. Yeah, we had those for a long time. See, those I I still enjoy because it there's nothing there's no commitment. If it melts, then you just drink it, right? Right. There's no time constraints. And yeah, it's a lot of it's like getting married eating a popsicle. <laughs> I'm married to this idea that I'm going <laughs> to eat. A frozen dessert for the next 15 minutes. Yeah, that's silly. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, the good discussion. Good discussion. I, I think I think as to whether you want which one, um, I don't care. <laughs> it depends on my mood. You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to commit. What, what taste is, is yearning in my mouth? Hello, Pod <laughs> Crackers and possible guests. Just wondering, what is something you have always wanted? Did you ever get that something you have always wanted? Loving the podcast, guys. Badge is awesome and Good's laugh is amazing. Oh, well, thanks for forgetting about me. Ol- Your hair's ol- red. Olivia. 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 <laughs> I say names weird. Is there anything you ever wanted? 
Well, mm. I, I said last last time that, that when I was a kid, I always wanted a dog. Yeah. Never got that. Still haven't got that. You get I've that always right. wanted a house. Never gotten a house. Well, you could have done that instead of moving into the tiniest little apartment for the most amount of money in the way the world. <laughs> it is true. It is true. <laughs> it's true. No, I was actually looking at uh, homes in Austin. The problem is, is that there has been a lot of opportunity in LA just for me being physically here. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot. We get a lot for that. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I was. I've been thinking about it because, like. I don't know. It just seems like there's been a lot of opportunity because I'm in LA. Um, and I don't think I would get that same thing if I was in Texas. Yeah, probably not. Most I mean, of the Texas things is- though that I want, I just buy now either that or I don't want them so much. Like, I don't know really, really expensive stuff. Like other than like a Tesla or something like that. I I've got a list of things that I want that are like 150 quid and I could probably afford to buy one of them. But there's like seven or eight yeah. things that like, oh that'd be really cool to have. Like, do you see the Simpsons Lego house? Oh my god, I want that. No, I haven't seen that. <laughs> but it's really like I don't need I it. This Lego thing well, I want a couple it. weeks ago, and I have not. It's still in the box. It's so big, and now I don't even want to put it together. Oh, oh fuck me! Try and open the box. Well, you open that box. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah, I had a friend with that. That's lovely. Well, you can, you can ship it to me if you like. Yeah. It's probably made out of fucking <laughs> lead painted <laughs> and child labor. Oh, wow. well, someone's a pessimist. I don't know. I'm just bitter at Volkswagen. That's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the emissions on that Lego uh, set is just uh, out, yep. out of this it's world. You uh, know, uh, Microsoft announced this weekend that the HoloLens is going in developer kit mode for $3,000. And I emailed them. Because they don't tell you how to get on this list. There's like a short list. They won't even. They won't just take your money. There's a short list of people that they're going to take money from. And so I'm trying to get my name on that list. I want to give the money because I would really want a hollow lens. Yeah, you want to develop for it. No. Shh, that's a key word. You want to develop oh, yes. for it. Yes, I would love. I to will develop. develop everything. I all my entire pipeline will be developed for hollow lens. I wonder. I uh, wonder what it's like. The wonder what code base all that stuff is done in. C sharp. Okay, why well, does C sharp? I think I don't know. I'm just making that up. But that's what most of those stuff Microsoft does. That's is. what Echoes. Hey, I'm wearing a shirt. That's what Echoes hey. program did. Yeah. Uh, or C plus plus or something. I don't know. Something. Some C language. I don't know. I'm talking out my butt. I have no clue. Yeah, you really are. Um. um. So uh, they also announced, I mean, not to tangent even further, but their new laptops, man, Apple's getting wrecked right now. This reminds me of like PlayStation four versus Xbox one. And now this always is said though, like Apple's getting like Apple's going down. Apple that's been said. Well, I'm not saying they're going down, but as far as this is the first time where, where I wouldn't even consider buying an Apple product over a Microsoft product when it comes to a laptop, like I would not buy a MacBook air right now over or MacBook pro over the new surface. <sighs> Yeah, but the new Surface apparently doesn't have a, a replaceable battery, which is a big no-no for me. Is this? No, no you're, 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 no, that does Surface not. Surface 4. So. Yeah, your Mac Pro, Prime Cook Pro does not. Yeah, no, I haven't had a laptop with a replaceable battery for about three years, four years. That, one, yeah, that, that worries me because that's always the thing that goes on my laptops is battery. Well, the thing is, is that once it's internal, they cut. It's under like warranty for a lot longer, um, and also like I don't know the thing. Yeah, I think that's something that's just like a thing of the past, almost a little like snap off battery. That's mm-hmm. not a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the ultrabooks they don't have removable batteries. Most laptops uh, they don't. It's just the mechanism of snapping it off and having the connectors and. The battery pack will be in its own encased thing with plastic, and then the the you know connector thing will be in plastic as well. Like all of that takes up so much room that most people are designing it out of the uh, out of the equation. And if it's been eight years or however long it takes, I mean the last like my last like Toshiba satellite that had a replaceable battery, it took it like eight years or ten years before the battery was just done, where you had to get plugged in. And if it's been that long, they want you to just buy it on the laptop at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. But also, like, battery technology, I mean, it, not a lot has changed, but they've gotten really good at being able to 
tell how many times you're cycling the battery, make sure to cycle it at the right time, pull from this cell instead of another cell if it hasn't been cycled in a while. Like the battery technology has gotten really good at keeping batteries fresh um, and uh, well maintained. Hmm? Hmm. 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 Um, the funny thing is, is like, I don't ever have that desire if we go back to like buying stuff. Like if I can't afford something, I almost never have a des- a crazy desire to get it. Does that make sense? I, if it's if it's a big thing, I I got this from my father. I, I have to research it. Yeah, uh, and I get to the point where I research it so much that I'm worried about buying it in case it's actually the wrong one. Right. And, and yeah, I, I end up spending three months. Thing and then oh, the price is going to come. Anything IT, the price is always going to come down. Right. You're right, and next year's about, model will have fine. this. So if I yeah. wait three more months, yeah, uh, I literally spent three months before I bought this monitor. And just, <laughs> I'm really bad about just getting on a whim and buying things. Like this chair I'm sitting in, this stupid fifteen hundred Herman Miller chair, basically came about because Co was complaining about his chair sucking. I'm like, I'm gonna buy a chair, or like the stupid iPhone. Like, I didn't, I didn't want the iPhone six because I was having my iPhone five. Not that I didn't want it, but then we go to London. It's like. AT&T is messing me up here trying to get, uh, you know, my stuff. So I'll just buy a new phone, I guess. I don't know. A lot of my purchases are on a whim. Yeah. But, hey, that's kind of flexibility. That's one thing that, you know, I don't know. It's kind of nice. Oh, this is wrong. I'm going to throw money at it. Oh, it's fixed. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind of where, I don't know if we our homeless talk made it in after Co died, but that's kind of where my frustrations are at. Like, if you're ever around me in city, you probably see me throw money at homeless people because, like, I don't know. I try to, I don't know. And then I feel bad about that. Cause I'm like, God, what if they go and buy drugs with it now? What if I just enabled them? Like, that's why, I don't know. The BTC and I ate lunch with that one guy. Like I felt much better about it. I forgot buying. about that. Yeah. When you were in San Francisco, you actually sat down and ate lunch with a dude. Yeah. He was a vet. But he, he wasn't crazy. He just had a PTSD um, from being in the Vietnam war. So he's, I mean, he's, we, we had a car, you know, pleasant conversation. He wasn't, Messed up. It was an issue. Chad wasn't there, so I'll tell the story to Badger, I guess, too. Uh, later that day, Chad and I were talking about it. We were walking down the street, and I was like, yeah, he wasn't crazy or anything. Kind of looked like this guy. Actually, that is the guy. That is him right there. That is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so weird because we were, like, on the other side of the damn city at this point from where BTC and I were at earlier that day. Just, yeah, and then uh, I thought BTC saw him again and had another long conversation with him. Did he? Huh. Yeah, He's BTC gave him 40 bucks, dude. Yeah. 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 He seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, again, that goes back to the, what we were talking about, about mental health problems and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah he said he couldn't hold out a job because he'd have, like, episodes sometimes during the day. Mm-hmm. And he just couldn't. You know. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but apparently um, MDMA and, and ecstasy is, is very good for PTSD. Um, it, hmm. it, it makes Except for marijuana makes, as well. Yeah, it makes them more relaxed and more trusting, and it's better for therapy sessions as well, apparently. For hmm. what I'm yeah, sometimes I wish that the street d- drugs, you know, weren't classified as they were. So, uh, you, yeah, it's you know, stuff just, could be, you know, researched on them and actually put into the pipeline. Yeah, it, it, you're right. You should be able to to research it and find out, you know, what it does and why. And instead of this whole, no, it's illegal. Don't right. touch it. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's so bad. It but can't apparently. ever be used for anything good. I was told that marijuana became illegal because of either the hemp or paper or something industries were worried about the competition. And I've heard, I've marijuana. heard, yeah, I've heard yeah. multiple things. That one, it was like a racial thing. Uh, that you know, it was like, oh, look at all these people who we don't like. They use this as their like, um, you know, as their you know, we use tobacco and they use marijuana. So we should just, you know, ban it just to, you know, screw over these guys. And I also heard the same thing that the hemp industry, hemp paper is way better uh, in various ways for archiving. And, um, you know, it has wider whites or like something like that Uh, lasts a lot longer. It's more like um, cloth instead of like paper, like all these amazing things that hemp does. And yeah, that the paper industry was like, oh, we could also do this to get rid of it. So yeah, no, it's illegal. So, yeah. Stupid. Which I, seems to be enough hemp products that seems like 
someone could have done that with an industry. If it's really that much better, like why hasn't capitalism worked to where you see well, like look at like the electric brand. car like how long that's taken to go from being murdered by the auto industry to coming back and how much money it took to actually force it into the mainstream to where it wasn't where it was viable like yeah okay you needed somebody uh, like musk who is independently wealthy and not you know, yeah. bought off by a big company and he has uh, a vision like yeah musk is like my favorite person ever because he has a vision he has the smarts and business sense to get it done and he isn't he he doesn't seem uh i'm sure that he's as greedy as the as the rest of us but like he doesn't seem like that's his his motivation i mean he's gonna make money at it but it's not like he's like gonna run it into the ground because it doesn't make money or because it does i don't know you know what I'm trying to, I don't know. I'm, I wish I didn't speak for a living because I'm really bad at public speaking. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, is, it is rife all around the world, but it is a particularly big problem in the States where there are industries paying off legislators because mm-hmm. some rules do not agree with their business model or whatever. Well, Google does it, that. It, it, yeah, it, it's, Everyone it's, does, it's, Everyone does it. I mean, yeah. you Oh my God! Amazon is setting themselves up for a fucking lawsuit by removing shit like the Chromecast and the Apple TV. I cannot that, believe. The thing is that it's I mean, their they're store. They're going to argue that they're not they're not creating a monopoly and that there is no trade issue here. That the thing that is, but Apple has done that with the from competition, but they are removing them from a competition. I don't know. The, the app Apple has done that with their App Store, though. It's something that <laughs> mimics Apple's own apps. Or whatever they kick out of the app store. Why? Why is it that Amazon isn't allowed to do that with their own store? Hmm. I mean, it's a private. Yeah, I, I still it's think it's different because it's a different market that you're competing in. I don't know. It really reminds me back to whenever Microsoft got in trouble about Internet Explorer not allowing other browsers to be competitive in that market. But what you're saying about Apple's apps, that would be true as well. Yeah, like I'm. I there is no other way to install apps. On the I wonder if there's something in the terms of service with Apple that allows them to do that. There's definitely, I mean, Apple TV and Chromecast were not violating any of uh, Amazon's terms of service. Terms right. of service that don't give you any choice and, and cause a monopoly are not legally binding, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. there's that too. Yeah, I don't know. I think that, uh, I mean, I'm not obviously not a lawyer, but I think that Amazon is setting themselves up for a possible lawsuit. Yeah, I, 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 we, we can't say in terms of service say if you watch this podcast you owe us 20 grand so the thing is, yeah. is I really don't see that there's a lawsuit because you can all you say is go to a different store like yeah but that's the thing is they own a market somewhere share. else they own a market share in online retail so they're creating a monopoly and then they're they're, they're shutting out competition inside the monopoly they've created but you can say the know. exact same thing about uh, iPhone is is they that you can't go to another app store, uh, and they have the biggest market share in terms of phones. I mean, not not majority, but in terms of the single like biggest phone, Apple is it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that I think it's just stupid because you're not the amount of people. Someone who's going and looking for a Chromecast is not, they're not the audience for Alexa or they're not the audience for the Fire Stick. Like, I don't know. I mean, sure, they they it's they do the similar things, but if you've chosen... I wonder if you search for them now, if you just get, I'm going to go see. Search that for would be funny. I get. Like, why did they keep the Roku? Why did they keep, like, I don't know. There's so many questions because also, like, I, I feel like it's a lot... Yeah, if you search for Chromecast, the first search result is Amazon Fire TV stick. That's funny. That's pretty funny. The, the Roku will play the Amazon stuff, but the oh, the, that's true. Like, they they're yeah, doing that's why because they don't support yeah, you're right, you're their right, platform. Right. That's you're why. Right. So like, if Google wants, they could support, uh, but they obviously don't want to do that. I mean, they're, they're in big competition right now, right? Like between yeah. Twitch and YouTube and stuff. Like all those things are kind of coming to a head. Yeah. What's funny is when I when I um uh 
when I got my first Chromecast, I bought it through Amazon because I knew the shipping was going to be a lot more reliable than through the Google store. And I was one of the first people with a Chromecast because of that. Hmm. Which I thought was funny. Hmm. I don't think the Roku does Amazon. <laughs> That's where mine sat pretty much as I bought it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the Roku does Amazon, but it's still in the store. Uh, but yeah, isn't, isn't like the, the Fire just pretty crappy in general? I mean, I know the phones, they pretty okay. much... The Fire Stick was, was, was fine. four minutes before our meeting, by the way. So okay, wrap let's wrap this stuff up. Bring um, up penis, 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 penis. Uh, so someone asks, so what things do you do as a group when you're not recording slash streaming? Uh, we drink. All right, thanks so much for watching the uh, podcast. If you want to submit your questions or subscribe to the podcast, uh, mindcracklp.com slash podcast is the place to do it. There are links to subscribe in iTunes or YouTube and also a form to fill out if you want to send us questions. Thank you, everyone who sent questions today. Uh, that was a big help. Hope to see you next time on the podcast. Hopefully, Co will have internet. Bye. Bye. Bye.